Oh man, guys, are you ready for the ultimate fight when I come back? Because it's going to be over Oppenheimer, guys. Oh my god, what an unbelievably dog shit movie. What a horrible, what a trash movie. I couldn't believe, I actually couldn't believe it. I was like, it's not going to be ba as bad as Dunkirk. Probably won't be as good as like Inception, which is Nolan's best movie, by the way, in case you didn't know that. Um, may, may, so I'm like shooting for like Interstellar, maybe, around there. Because I've heard a lot of hype, okay? I'm shooting for Interstellar. Maybe it's Interstellar good. And um, man, what just like a, what a dog shit f***ing movie. What a dog shit f***ing movie. Is it true the OSG is really loud? No. I don't know why people say that. I feel like people are... Here's another thing, too. When I'm fighting against people's movie takes, I don't know how many are actually their movie takes versus how much is just, like, shit that they've heard online. Um, or that's, like, a meme that everybody says. You could hear every line of dialogue in this movie. I don't know why people are saying the, uh, the audio was too loud at some points. So that's not true. Um, the audio in the movie was fine. There's no way you think Inception is better than Memento. Inception is a lot more ambitious than Memento. Memento is a really good movie, but Inception is more ambitious. And, like, it's a pretty good movie. Come on. Bro, I didn't watch the IMAX film version. I watched whatever IMAX is available in fucking Stockholm. <clears throat> what well, didn't you like about Dunkirk? I said Dunkirk was really boring. Um, I don't know, but it was shot nice. I can say that. Lots of negative space and all the flying scenes, the little plane battles and the smoke and not the explosions. Like, I thought that was cool. I thought, I thought Dunkirk looked cool. It was just really boring. I just didn't care about anybody. Also, the watching Oppenheimer in IMAX. Oppenheimer does not need to be watched in IMAX. There are no shots in that movie that benefit from it being an IMAX movie. I don't know why he was so obsessed with a 70mm film, or why everybody in, is, is like, oh, we gotta watch an IMAX, blah, blah, blah. That's just not true at all. That's not even remotely true. Interstellar is a movie that you absolutely... Bro, it might sound soy as fuck to say, but I actually gasped in the theater. And the Interstellar thing, when the camera pans up twice to the wave, that's such a cool shot. Oh my god, it was such a cool shot. That like just for the wave planet alone, seeing Interstellar in IMAX was worth it, one hundred percent. Oppenheimer, literally, there is no point in watching any of this dog shit f film uh, in, in IMAX. There's not a single f shot. Also, oh god, what do I want to? Oh man, I'm about to be unleashed in this hotel lobby. I banned so many people. I might do a big unban on my subreddit. Okay, I banned like twenty people. People kept saying Destiny didn't like this movie because he has ADHD. Oppenheimer is literally the most ADHD-friendly three-hour movie I have ever seen in my entire life. And if you don't think that, you probably have ADHD. I have never... Nolan has a huge problem. I noticed this. Nolan has a huge problem letting the camera sit on somebody and letting them fucking act. Every single scene in Oppenheimer is like, exposition, music, cut, exposition, music, cut, exposition, exposition, music, music, cut, cut, cut. It is such an aggressively shot film. You don't have time to breathe on any fucking part of this. Like, even the first, like, 15 minutes of the film is like a whole fucking, like, the first, like, 10 years of his life. You go from, like, a kid that sucks at chemistry to, like, the music blaring as he's, like, solving key math equations for quantum mechanics. Like, bro, what are we even watching right now like why am i getting a why am i getting a physics qm training montage 10 minutes into this movie do i need this right now um the first 15 minutes were the worst part of the movie yeah it's so cringe i think that the um the constant score was more obnoxious than the editing it's it's a combination of the score the editing and the dialogue and really the exposition like i feel like he can't um I feel like Nolan has, there always has to be somebody talking, or else he thinks like the audience is going to get bored. There's always, there's always talking. Oh my god. Did you not like the sex scenes? No, honest to god too, it should have been a PG-13 movie. The F-bombs were cringe, and the sex scenes were cringe. I don't know why he even had them in the film. And I love that actress, okay? It's just so cringe. It feels like he's just like, I'm going to make a rated R movie. I'm going to be, a, I'm going to make a mature movie now because I'm Nolan. I'm going to make my first rated R. Was Tenet rated R? I feel like this was his first rated R movie. Oh, oh my God. And everything with the, 
I am become death destroyer. I feel like he read a Reddit post on Oppenheimer because every time you saw Oppenheimer brought up before the movie, there were two things that people read about Oppenheimer. It was that video clip of being like, I am become death destroyer worlds. And then it was the, uh, does anyone else today I learned that Oppenheimer passed a note to somebody asking to check the equations and later on he found out it was the atmosphere thing. And I was like, oh my God. I feel like he read like these two factoids on Oppenheimer. He's like, bro, I gotta make a movie about this dude. This is some litty shit. This is some litty shit. So cringe. Also, oh my God, where, hold on. Oh my God, there's so many complaints. What else? There were, I can't believe I'm gonna make this complaint. There were way too many celebrity there were way too many celebrities in this movie. It was actually distracting. It was actually distracting. I feel like ever I would like look at the background and I'd be like, is that like a B-list actor? Like there were so many celebrities in this movie. Why? Why? Oh my God. I feel like Nolan puts out like a lay reddit post where he's like any lol actors want to be in my new upcoming epic nolan film and then like every single celebrity is like yes put me in yes 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 holy shit um oh my god what else i can complain about every single um here, this here's like this is my broad criticism if i'm if I'm going to, uh, if I'm going to make like a broad criticism of the movie that like f the whole movie up, he needed to pick like one or two. He could do A plot, B plot. He needed to pick like, um, he needed to pick like two plots and just do two interwoven plots. And then that's it. He could have picked the Strauss thing and the main bomb thing. He could have picked like the bomb thing and the security clearance thing. But he needed to just pick two things instead of like following so many different random f***ing threads. Um, because I feel like at the end, like we didn't get, we didn't get like any deep dive into anything. Like for instance, it would have been really interesting seeing them dive. This would have been boring as fuck for most people. But seeing them dive into the math or physics of like the bombs would have been interesting. But blame. Nobody maybe would have really liked that. Another interesting thing would have been an actual deep dive, critical dive into his relationships, his personal relationships, rather than like one sex scene and then one crying scene. That would have been interesting. It would have been interesting seeing him actually manage the people at Los Alamos instead of going to the chalkboard one time and then all of it just magically working out. Um, it would have been interesting seeing him actually reflect on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, that he was involved in the targets, that he led to a lot of people dying. What does it mean to study a science and then have that turn into like a weapon? Um, it would have been interesting to see the actual start. Like, there there are so many things that would have been interesting if they would have actually picked one or two stories and like really dove into them. But instead, you got like five or six of these dog shit f plots that are all thrown on top of each other, like rapidly cutting from one to the next without any real dive or treatment of any of it in a mature way. Um, I feel like um, here's like a here's like a question I ask, and then people get mad. He's like, oh, because it's not a superhero movie. If you ask a question, what is the climax of the movie? There is none. It's not the bomb going off because who the fuck actually cares? Like that wasn't even the point of the movie. So it wasn't the bomb. It wasn't the test. It wasn't the actual nuking of Hiroshima. Was it when Kitty had her moment in like the interrogation room? It probably wasn't that. That doesn't even make sense. Why was Kitty such an awesome character for like four minutes of this movie? And then that was it. And then nothing else. Um, was it the Senate hearing with the, um, with the one, another famous actor dude that has like seven lines in the whole movie? Um, the guy that played, um, the Bohemian Rhapsody dude. Oh God. Um, fuck. Who am I thinking of? Mr. Robot guy. Yeah. Rami Malek or whatever. Was it, was that supposed to be the climax? Was the climax that Strauss found out that he didn't get with like, Another issue that people have is like, um, what, like, why do we give a f Here's the thing. We can automatically care about the atomic bomb because it's an atomic bomb. Sure, we care about it. It's an atomic bomb. You don't even need to sell that. Why the fuck do we care if Oppenheimer loses his security clearance or not? Why do we care about that? Do we care about that? Like, notice that like the entire B-plot of the movie hinges on him maintaining or losing his security clearance. Does it actually matter if he does though? Like there's nothing in the film that like attaches us to him maintaining that security clearance. Um, so, so like him at the end, it's supposed to be like a big emotional moment when it's like, oh, okay, well, you know, you're not going to be charged with anything, but you've lost your clearance. Like, okay, so, oh God. Yeah. I don't know. Just cringe. 
Yeah, and and I know that people people who are fanboys of either Oppenheimer or Nolan are going to fill in all this like, oh, well, it's about the loss of his reputation, blah, blah, blah. Show me that on screen. This is all stuff that you're inferring with your own mind. But like, where is a disgraced Oppenheimer on screen? Like, where is he walking down the street and somebody spits on him? Or where is he going into a classroom where nobody wants to talk to him? Or where is he trying to reach out to an old friend and they don't want to have anything to do with him? Or like, these things don't happen. So when you talk about like, oh, what about the loss of reputation? You don't, you, you don't even really see it. Like, not really, like barely. Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh God, it's such a dog shit movie. Ugh. It was literally the small court scenes. Who the fuck cares? And then Strauss being like this big manipulator, there's like a huge twist that's revealed. It was like, oh my God, Strauss manipulator, who cares? Oh my God. So cringe. They mentioned it, but he's still like hanging out with Einstein and getting medals. Yeah. Oh. Would you like better Oppenheimer or Dune? Honest to God, I, I would I would pick Dune pretty easily. I really genuinely believe that this film was like a 3 out of 10 film. Like 15 minutes into the film, I was like, oh my God, this is actually really bad. That I'm sure it's going to get a lot better because it's so f hyped. Um, 15 minutes into that film, I was like, this is the one of the most dog shit intros to a film I've ever seen in my life. It's got to get better. It's got to get better than this. And it didn't. It didn't. It didn't for the whole time. Oh my God. What about the soundtrack? The soundtrack is okay. Dune's soundtrack is really good, though. What do you think about them not showing the actual bombing in Japan? You know what? On I actually think it's kind of weird that they didn't because apparently him deciding to do it or not was like kind of a big deal, and it's kind of weird they didn't show anybody dying as a result of it. So like you didn't even really feel like the ethical. I don't know. I just said everything in the movie was handled so dog shit. Oh my god, it was so bad. Oh god. Ah, oh, yikes. 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 <laughs> Nolan doesn't use VFX, so he would have needed to drop an actual bomb. Yeah. The stupid f***ing marbles that they were putting in the... God, oh my god. The bomb, the bomb test going off was hot as f***. Was it? I just felt like it was pretentious. Am I just an asshole now? It didn't feel that cool to me at all. I understand what he was going for, but I also like, maybe I would have liked that scene more if, I don't know why there were so many f random f cuts to like the energy rings and like, it was so schizo. It was so ADHD schizo. Why were there so many interspersed things of like the shitty like firecrackers exploding and like, oh God. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I hated it, dude. I hated this movie so much. I hated this movie so fucking much. The stock video physics visions at the beginning were pretty cringe. Yeah, and it kept making me feel like, you know what movie I felt like I was watching? It made me feel like I was watching Sunshine. Because that was another movie with, is his name Killian? Is it Killian Murphy? Or Cillian? I don't know how to pronounce his name. It made me feel like I was watching Sunshine again. Because that movie is a ton of random cuts to him like falling into the sun. And it's the same lead actor. And I'm like, Jesus. God. God, what a horrible fucking movie. And then there's that, God, that whole reveal where Robert Downey Jr.'s Strauss character is like, oh, I was the one that set it all up. Like, wow, I felt like I was watching Game of Thrones, R plus T equals J, whatever the fuck. And I was like, who cares? Wow, so this guy was the bad guy? All along, am I supposed to give a fuck? Like, I don't know this dude. He hasn't been like... Also... 
why was the why was the latest in chronological order? Why was the last thing that happened in black and white? Why? Why would they do that? Why would they do that? Was there a reason? Can somebody give me the artistic reason why you would make the most recent thing chronologically happening? Why would you make that in black and white? It's an homage to Pulp Fiction. Did Pulp Fiction have black and white scenes? I don't even remember. I feel like it didn't, but I could be wrong on that. Also, why, bro, this movie is so dog shit. You know how they've done like the Trump indictments to show you how many f***ing sellout f conservative dipshits will defend Trump to the end of the earth? Why is there a scene where the guy's like, oh yeah, I learned Dutch in six weeks, and then he, f and then he speaks German? I think Nolan was dripping that shit in just to find out which one of you fucking retards would defend his movie no matter what the f*** he did. No matter what the f*** he did. Why? Yeah. Destiny said the last duel was good. I thought the last duel was interesting. All right. Interesting. Last duel was like a okay watch. Like, I'm not going to remember that movie in a year or two. But I was like, okay to watch in the theater. Dutch sounds like German, but it wasn't German. In the movie, he's speaking German. Yes. He's speaking German, but then later on he goes to say that he's speaking Dutch. I don't know why or how you fucked that up in the movie. Go Google it if you don't believe me. Apparently people think I'm trolling. Surely that's not true? Uh, okay, I mean... German, Dutch, Scene, Oppenheimer. Hold on, I can't find it now. I'm getting, I'm getting epically trolled. <laughs> Oppenheimer in the movie touches on his lecturing days and features a scene of actor Killian Murphy speaking the Dutch language. Murphy did not learn the Dutch language, but instead asked Hoite van Heiteme, the director of photography, to speak the sentences so he could replay them and slow them down for clarity, learning the scene phonetically. This has come with a lot of praise, but for Dutch speakers, it seems that many don't even recognize their own language, with many questioning whether some of the speech was even in German. One Reddit user, Lay Reddit, responded to watching the film with, I could swear he was speaking in German, not Dutch. It certainly didn't sound like Dutch, and I'm a native speaker of that language. Anyway, that caused a huge laugh here in the cinema in Amsterdam, where I just watched it. Preply spoke to a few native Dutch speakers who had recently watched the film, with one saying he thought it was a mixture between Limburg's, a Dutch dialect, and German, and another saying, I thought they made a mistake in the film when they said Dutch, thinking they meant Deutsch, as the speech sounded German. <laughs> where are my Dutch speakers in chat? <laughs> Any Dutchers in here? If you slow it down, it is Dutch, but as a Dutch person, it certainly didn't sound Dutch. <laughs> Limfeo, where even is Dutch? <laughs> True. <laughs> I am not Dutch, but I can understand it. It was not Dutch based. Okay. Anyway, so just more evidence. The movie was a dog shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 